All right, greetings and salutations. Um, first of all, let me tell you guys what I know about hunting, okay? First off, what I know about hunting is absolutely nothing. I don't know anything about hunting at all. I don't get it. I'm a city person, um, have been most of my life, and um, uh, everything that I'm about to say is um, lies, speculations, um, untruth, um, uneducated. Um, I didn't um, research any of it. It's just all hearsay and garbage. So here we are 45 seconds into the video and um, I would not, I really wouldn't be upset if you turned it off. All right. Um, so why am I, why am I talking about this? It's my daughter's fault. Um, my daughter grew up um, with me and my wife uh, her entire life and like us was a city person and um, she, uh, she got a volleyball scholarship to a school in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado and um, uh, the highest collegiate uh, university in, uh, I don't know, in the country, in the world, in the, on the planet. In the solar system, I'm not really sure. I just know that um, when I go up there to visit her and I walk about 15 feet, I uh, I am like doubled over with my hands on my knees, gasping for air. So, with that being said, is so my daughter goes from um, from being the city person um, to um, man, I, I don't know. I saw on her social media one time, um, she's out. Like there's a the profile picture or whatever it is, and it's her like standing with a shotgun with a pile of ducks or geese or something in front of her. Um, I mean, there's got to be fifty of these damn things just all stacked up. Like there it is. So I called her. I said, "Hey, I saw a picture on your thing about um, I don't know. It looked like you got a, I don't know what the hell it looked like. Are those decoys or whatever?" And she's like, "No, no, no." So the picture is that she's standing there. And a couple of guys, and there's a pile of ducks or geese or whatever. And behind them, there's a bunch of geese or ducks or whatever just standing around. So I said to her, hey, um, uh, I saw that picture on there. What is that? And she said, oh, we went geese hunting or uh, duck hunting or whatever it was. But we went hunting. So I said, went hunting? Get the heck out of here. What, what were you doing hunting? She said, well, that's what they do up here. You know, they, they hunt. They fish. They, they do all of that stuff. So I said, oh, okay, well, um, it doesn't look very challenging because there's a bunch of geese literally standing behind you in this picture. So, I mean, you're just basically pointing them at the ground, just banging them off. You just, that's it, just just killing all these ducks and geese and everything. She's like, Dad, those are decoys. <laughs> that's not the ducks that we killed. Those are our decoys, so all the ducks would come in or whatever. So it just goes to show you how stupid I am in, uh, in you know, about this whole hunting thing. Um... But my personal opinion about hunting is twofold. One, I totally understand hunting. Totally get it. You, it's the thrill of the chase. You want to prove as an animal, as a human being, as, you know, as, you know the, the number one predators on the planet, that you want to prove that you could kill stuff. I get it. That hunger, the thrill of the chase, to chasing this thing down, to getting it in your crosshairs, to pulling the trigger, the ending its life. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I get it. I also understand that there's people on this planet who go out. Like I watch that like trapped in the middle of Alaska shows and I live in Alaska for no reason and I don't have anything, no running water, no electricity. I don't I, you know, no bathroom. I don't have none of that. So I have to go out and I have to, you know, get an elk or a deer or a bear or whatever I got to get. Otherwise, I'm going to die because it's, it's like me. I'm the only one out here. I'm just out here by myself. And it seems like those people, for some reason, all they, they all own a plane. I, I don't understand how that all works. But anyway, I'm, I'm addicted to those shows. I watch all of them. But anyway, I understand hunting for those guys. They got to go out and I don't even care what they hunt with. They go out and they like, they're doing it for food. I saw a show the other day where like these two guys, two guys were in a boat and another guy was like on a four wheeler and they go 
chase him after these uh, caribou or something and chase him into the water. And then while they're swimming across the water, the guy in the boat just starts shooting him. Boom, 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 just killing him. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I, I, yep, I get that. You, you ambush them. You do a, you know, a, a flanking maneuver on them. You get them to the weak standard. You get the high ground. Bing, bing, bing. Done. See, in that scenario where these guys are, are doing it for substance, I totally get it. You, you know, you got to be the stronger animal out there and you got to kill these things, right? Got no problem with that. And, and, you know, a lot of these guys that do that in that scenario where it's just them and their homestead or whatever, they, they see, you know, 50 caribou and they decide that they're going to kill two of them. They kill two of them and then, you know, they leave the 48 to, you know, reproduce and do that whole thing. And then next winter they kill two more and all that other stuff. They're not just out there mowing down caribou, right? So, I get that aspect of, of hunting. I also, like I said, the first aspect I get of just wanting to kill stuff. I get that too. Um, the third aspect I don't really get. I don't really get the I'm hunting for sport thing where like, you know, now I've been up there where, where my daughter is up in, a, up in the mountains and I'm expecting to have a conversation with people about, yeah, I'm just out there killing stuff. You know what I mean? And, and just owning up to that. Yeah, I kill things because I like killing stuff, you know, and that's that. And, you know, yeah, I eat it because if I don't, then people are going to bust my balls about it and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I got to eat it. Now, I'll tell you this. When I was a kid in New York City, um, I guess one of my friend's fathers or uncles or something went and, and, and hunted and did whatever. I, I had no idea about it. But what I did know was that I was at my friend's house and he said, hey, we're having hamburgers. You want one? And I went, yeah, sure, I'll have a hamburger. So they make me this hamburger and I took a bite into it and it tasted like it was rotten. It tasted like um, like they, they had it out in the sun too long or something. But I bit into it and I, I don't know, I was maybe 10 years old or something. And I bit into it and instantly I thought, this is going to make me sick. But I was at this barbecue and I had to keep eating it, you know, whatever. So I continued to muscle this thing down. And after it was all said and done, my friend's father said, what do you think of that burger? And uh, I didn't want to say, it tastes like uh, someone made it with their feet. I didn't want to say like, oh, I think I need to go to the emergency room and have my stomach pumped. I didn't want to say, um, I'll never, ever eat here again. I didn't want to say any of those things. So I just thought that by saying, eh, it, was okay. it was okay, it was all right that that would get me off the hook. Well, once I said, oh, it was all right. He said, you know what that is? And I said, no. He said, that's venison. And I said, oh, okay, you know, great, you know, venison. And um, I, I left that conversation never to think about it again, never to have another conversation. I didn't go home and say to my father, hey, what is venison? I didn't say like, hey, the people across the street tried to poison me, you know, um, I, none of that stuff. I just went and carried on my life. And that, that was that. About 20 years later, um, I don't know what conversation it was, but someone says, oh, you know, you, you, you want to hunt. You got to try venison. I said, venison? What's venison? And they said, this deer meat. And all of a sudden it brought back this childhood memory like, oh my God, these people tried to give me deer meat. They didn't even tell me. They just fed me like, like in my mind, I thought like you could have fed me a damn monkey brain and I would have been like, you can't do that to people. You got to tell them, yo, my man, you like venison? Oh, you do? Well, we got some. You want a venison burger? You can't give me the guys that you're giving me a hamburger that's just made of beef and you're going to slip it. I mean, you're going to switch it up and you're going to give me some wild animal that's out in the middle of nowhere. You, you, you can't, you can't do that. Um, uh, so that, that, that ain't going to work. You got to give me far, far warning on something that you're going to feed me. Now, let me tell you, I'm not I'm not a queasy guy. I'll eat a squirrel, I'll eat a rat, I'll eat a snake, I'll eat a bear, I'll eat, I'll eat whatever I got to eat in a survival situation. So I don't have any problem with any of that. But you you can't you can't can't do that to me, right? So now here I am up in the Rocky Mountains, and I'm thinking that you know, listen. First of all, everybody in that in in the town, they're, they're all wear camouflage. I literally, not figuratively, I literally stand out like a sore thumb. I got this horrible accent, um, and I'm dressed like a human being. Um, so, I, you know, everyone there, they got boots on. They're, they're like at the deli wearing boots that look like you you could you could be like climbing through 50 pounds of mud. Like you can have mud up to your ears. That they're dressed like like they're leaving this deli or they're leaving this this restaurant and they're going to. Um, 
I don't even know what they're going to do. They're going to go slosh through five feet of mud and, you know, like, I don't, I don't even know what they're going to do. So I'm just thinking, wow, these are some hardworking people out here. They're, they're going to be, um, you know, ranching and they're going to be farming and they're going to be getting muddy and they're going to be getting dirty. Like they're going to be doing all of that stuff, you know? So these guys, guys, girls, babies, little babies, infants in camouflage. I'm like, who, who's a baby trying to hide from? You know, like, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Anyway, so um, I, I'm assuming that having conversations with these people is going to be like, yeah, well, that's what we do. We're, we're, um, we're hillbillies and we like to kill stuff, you know. And when you come up here in the mountains, you, you better just know that about us. You know, and you're like... Uh, okay, you know, like there's unwritten rules in the, in the subway. You know, when you go to New York City and you're in the subway, you don't meet, uh, make eye contact with people for a long time. You just don't do it because the response is going to be, yo, my man, what are you looking at? Go set your eyeball somewhere else. Don't be staring at me. Go stare at something else. So when they're telling me up in the mountains, like, yo, this, this is what we do. We we kill stuff, you know, then you just, uh, that's a conversation I'm expecting to have. But so I have a conversation with a bunch of guys that, are, you know, are in camouflage, they all have gun racks, they all have these boots that, that you know, could withstand, you know, whatever kind of mud and debris and all that other stuff. They all have vests on top of camouflage vests on top of camouflage vests, wearing orange hats. We'll get to the whole orange thing in a minute, but, but, so this is what they are. Now, let me, let me say this. Couldn't be nicer guys, could not be nicer guys, the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Um, and, and I literally said to one, one guy, you know, listen, you hillbillies, you don't know. And he said, hillbillies, I'm not a hillbilly. And um, automatically I was like, uh oh, I think I said like one of those unwritten words. Like I should have said uh, those unallowed words. Like I should have said the HB word or whatever, you know? Um, so I was like, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. He's like, no, no, I'm not offended. He's like, I'm a redneck. I'm not a hillbilly. I'm like, that's <laughs> Wait, what? What do you, you're, okay, so uh, what's the difference? He's like, what's the difference? As if he leaned into me to say like, hey, dumb dumb, what kind of self-respecting idiot doesn't know the difference between a hillbilly and a redneck? So I said, listen, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but I truly do not understand what the difference is between a hillbilly and a redneck. And he said, a redneck is somebody who runs a ranch or runs a farm, or works on a ranch or a farm. And from being out in the sun all day, they, you know, they, they're covered, basically, the rest of them, except the back of their head and their neck, because they're, you know, they're working or doing whatever. So therefore, it gives them a red neck. And he said a hillbilly is something completely different. A hillbilly is someone who's up in the mountains, who, you know, hunts and fishes, and does all that other stuff. Now, they could they could cross, but they, they don't often, but they can. And, um... That's the difference between the two. So I said, okay, well, I appreciate that information. You know, thank you. And then, um, uh, and then, um, you know, after having the conversation about the hillbilly and all that other stuff, um, uh, I started having the conversation about, about hunting. And you know, listen, like I said, is I, I don't, I don't mind the whole killing thing and all that other stuff. So I said, oh, you guys out here, you slaying some animals out here, you know, whatever. And I say, no, no, it's, we don't do it like that. We don't do it for fun. I said, you don't do it for fun. What do you do it for? They say, well, we do it because of population control. Because if we don't do it, then the elk, you know, they'll just keep, you know, um, getting more elk and more elk and more elk. And next thing you know, um, that you can't control the elk and the deer and the bears and the geese. And uh, and whatever else, the squirrels and the rabbits and everything else, they'll just overpopulate. And um, once they overpopulate, then that's it. They're, they're going to start tearing everything up. And I wanted to say to the guy, "Get the, f <laughs> come on, my man, don't, don't do that, don't do that, don't make it sound like you're doing something good for the, for the environment. That's not what you're doing. Listen, if if you, if if you didn't shoot bears." Then the bears would eat the elk, and the elk would eat the rabbits, and rabbits would eat the thing, and the thing would eat the... Like, the, the, the circle of life is going to happen with or without you. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need to say that, like, listen, I go out and I buy a $1,000 gun, 
and I go and get a five hundred dollar um ticket or allowance or a five hundred dollar um tag, um and then I go and I get a um a, a whatever spend you know x amount of dollars on this and x amount of dollars on that and i spend three or four thousand dollars so i can go out and i can help the environment with population control i mean i might have been born at night but i wasn't born last night i mean i'm a little bit smarter than that that that's not what that's all about don't tell yourself that not only don't tell yourself that don't tell anybody else that you know what i mean and don't tell me that well you you um you hunt because you like the taste of, of venison you hunt because you like the taste of elk you're a damn liar. You are a damn liar. You do not like to taste of that stuff. Why? Because it tastes like shit. It tastes like garbage. Excuse my language. It tastes horrible, right? I, I've i had uh, uh, bison in the finest restaurants. I had elk in the, the greatest places in the world. I've had you know, alligator and rattlesnake. and I've had all of that stuff. It's all horrible. And now I know it's not just me that it's horrible. Because if elk was so delicious, if venison was so delicious, why don't I see venison farms where I walk into wherever uh, supermarket I'm at, Walmart or whatever, and I walk in there and they have um, they have venison burgers and they have venison hot dogs and they have venison whatever and they have elk this and they have elk ribs and they have elk you know hooves and whatever else you want to eat at your local at your at your weekend barbecue. You know why they don't have that? Because it's horrible. And don't tell me that you can't raise elk and venison or, or deer the same way that you raise cow. They raise cows by the gazillions and mow through them and just and just just slaughter them by the I guess millions at this point. So you can't tell me that we can't create millions of elks and elks, elk. I don't think there's an S on that. Elks, elksuses, elksi, whatever. But you can't tell me that we can't create all of these deer and then mow through them or, or, or whatever. Why? Because nobody's buying it. Stuff is horrible. It's garbage. So listen, hunters, please, if you ever have a conversation with me, just tell me, yo, I like to kill stuff. That, that's perfectly fine. And don't tell me that you, you do it for subsistence. Because, so here's the deal, right? After a couple of years of my daughter being up there, she says, hey, dad, how would you like to come hunting with us? I said, ah, you know, I'm, I'm not, it's not really my thing. Um, I, I don't really see the, the reason to kill animals. Um, but you know what? You got a couple of guys that are going up there. I hear these elk are tremendous. Um, you know, I, I'll go up there. I'll hike with you guys through there and all that other stuff. And if one of you guys kills something, then I'll help you pack it out or whatever. Because you're going to do it whether I'm there or not. So I, I, I'll do you a favor to at least, you know, help you carry it out. I have no issues with that. So we go elk hunting, and um, first off, um, we left, I think, at like 3 o'clock in the morning. I get into this pickup truck that has, you know, so much trash and garbage in it. Like, it, it's cups and stuff is stacked on the floor. I got my knees up, you know, like the whole thing. You know, it's just, it's 100%. I don't know if the, this guy was a hillbilly or he's a redneck, but if I had to say what kind of hillbilly or redneck truck that I was getting into, I would have painted this exact picture. It was this exact truck. So we leave, it's dark, we're going up to the, the mountains, we're going through all these rocks and all this crazy gravel and, and stuff, and we're just um, on our way up there. You know, literally the second we get out of the car, it's like, all right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go up through here, and you guys go up through there, and we're going to... All right, now first of all, I'll tell you this, I've never seen an elk before. I know you may be surprised by that admission, but I have never seen an elk before. At least I don't think I've seen an elk before. Um, not one where someone say, Hey, look at that. That's an elk up until this time. Right. I've seen deer, you know, jumping across roads and stuff like that. Um, and I've seen other animals, but I, I've never seen an, an elk, but I have seen a moose one time. And I don't know, we might've been in Canada or might've been somewhere, but I saw a moose and I was like, Holy smokes. Look at the size of that animal. It is absolutely tremendous, but I've never seen an elk. So I'm thinking that it's probably like a little bit bigger than a deer and like the bigger antlers and like that kind of stuff, right? So I'm thinking, uh, all right, well, here we go. This is what we're going to do. So the, the plan was that we're going to do six miles this way and then six miles that way and then six miles the other way and we're going to do like whatever, right? Um, so here we go. We're off, right? So the whole time 
they're like giving me clues like you don't want to step too hard because of the leaves you don't want to do this and if you look over there you could see that and if you stay and you freeze and you wait and you stare and you look in the sun and the, all this wetness and they may be bedded don't be careful they're bedded if they're bedded then you spook them that 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 you'll bet them and spook them and if you spook them while they're bedded then you know that what that means and i'm thinking like i don't want to come across as an idiot so I'm just like, oh, yeah, who, who doesn't know what that means? Like, yeah, <laughs> I make sure I'm, listen, you may spook them while they're better, but not me. <laughs> I know better than that. I'm not doing that. Now I can't ask my daughter, hey, what does spook them when they're better mean? Does that, does that mean, like, should I really mean something? Now I know my daughter's carrying a rifle and I, I'm just, I'm just invited. I don't even, I don't have a rifle. I'm not here to shoot anything. But I have my pistol with me. I have a 9 millimeter Beretta. Not that it's going to do anything. But I only loaded one round into it. So if anything attacks me, I have that one round to kill myself. Because I'm not getting torn up by an animal. No, I'm going to joke. It was fully loaded and all that other stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Laser sights. I got the whole thing set up, right? So I just have that just in case. Like one of these people, they shoot an elk. And an elk turns around like, no, nah, not today. <laughs> not today. And they start charging at me or whatever. I'm, I'm hoping that at least I can I can protect myself with a with this pistol. I know it won't do anything against a bear or anything like that, but but anyway. So here we are, and we're hunting, and we're traveling the land, and all that other stuff. I I don't think that I ever moved so slow ever in my life because you're like taking a step, make sure nothing breaks, and this, this, that. Long story short, we went six miles this way, six miles that way, six miles the other way, whatever. We didn't we didn't see anything. We saw nothing at all. Now, let me backtrack a little bit, because I said to the guys as I was getting out of the truck, because I've never been hunting before, right? I don't, I'm not a, a, a connoisseur on wild animals. I don't know about any of that stuff. So I said to them, although I am like a safety freak, I'm like a, you know, like a, a plan A, B, C, D, E, and G, and F, and I, and K, and Z, like I have it all planned out. I'm never going to miss a, a detail. So I said to the guys, hey, um... Is there anything I got to be worried about out here? Like, is there anything that, like, like, is it like rattlesnakes? Or is it like king cobras? Is it like pterodactyls that are going to swoop down and, and snatch me up? Like, is there anything that I'm looking for an elk, but I really need to be worried about this? You know, is there any kind of, like, poisonous poison ivory or whatever? Or don't eat the thing that looks like an apple. Any of that stuff. So the guy says, no, not really. You know, there are some animals out here. He's like, there's uh, mountain lions out here. But, um... They'll, they'll, he said, there's mountain lions out here, but you'll never see them. But I can tell you this, they're always watching you. You know what I mean? Like, and, you know, I wouldn't be necessarily overly worried about it, whatever, but just know that they're out here, you know? So I'm like, okay. So now we go six miles this way. We go six miles that way. We go backwards, forwards. You know, we stop. Oh, I think I seen something. Nope, we didn't see anything. So we keep going. And now I'm trailing along with all these guys. So all of a sudden these guys say, hey, you know what would be better? Maybe if we split up. Me and this guy, or, or this guy and this guy are going to go that way, and you and your daughter, you go that way. So I said, okay. I said, but, you know, all right, no problem. So we, we go and we split up. So as I'm going with my daughter, I'm starting to kind of, like, get burnt out. I'm like, uh, you know what, listen, I, I don't think this is any elks here. You know, I just I just don't. I, I think that if, if they were here, we would have saw them. It's getting late. It's getting into the afternoon. I've just been hiking around in circles. I, I think I'm kind of like, I'm done with this, you know. So she's like, all right, well, we'll start making our way back. So we start making our way back along, along like, a, a cliff ridge line. And um, as we're, like, we're still trying to be kind of quiet and kind of, like, whatever. But we're not like we were in the beginning. Like, we were moving at the beginning at, like, a snail's pace. So anyway, so um, my daughter is trailing behind me now. She's probably behind me about, I don't know, 50 yards or something like that. And I'm... I'm, Cause I'm getting a little bit fed up. Like she's still hunting. I'm still like, well, uh, let's get back to the truck and get out of here. This thing's not working out too well. So as I'm like about 50 yards in front of her, I stop and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting. Now, mind you, I don't have a gun. I mean, other than my pistol, but it's holstered. It's not even loaded. You know, it's on condition like two. It's, I mean, like condition three or something. Magazine in, loaded magazine, um, bolt home. You know, whatever. Right. So weapon on safe. So um, so I'm just standing. There, I'm just waiting for her, and. I swear to God, as God is my witness, up from this cliff, literally, literally about 10 feet in front of me, like 10 feet in front of me, jumps this big, huge, brown animal. I mean, this thing literally 
is every single ounce of a damn lion. A damn lion jumps up, gets up over the ridge, and does... Now, it, it, I'm seeing its left side, right? Completely its left side. It jumps up onto, like, the 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 ridge line and is, like, kind of in, like, a like a hunch scout... scout uh, whatever, crawling position. And it kind of jumps up there and it's like slowly just moving. And I'm frozen like with fear, like frozen with fear, thinking to myself, holy smokes. First of all, I don't even know that I could get the pistol out, load it, chamber around, get it off safe and shoot this thing quick enough that it could kill me. Second off, I'm between my daughter and this mountain lion thinking that even if she's like, oh my God, dad, a mountain lion, she has to shoot me to get to it. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm just literally frozen. So this thing comes up, it does this little crawling thing by me, whatever, and just kind of disappears into the bush and the brush and all that other stuff. Never looked at me, never acknowledged that I was there. I'd never moved. I just stood there. My daughter comes up to me and I'm like, oh my God, I just saw a mountain lion. Like literally right there, a mountain lion. She's like, no, you didn't. I'm like, sweetheart, I'm telling you, literally, if you don't believe me, check my drawers, because I think I just crapped myself. Like, literally, this thing was insane looking. It was absolutely insane. So anyway, so now I got the pistol, I have it loaded, a chambered, and all that other stuff. For this next four miles, I know this thing is, is stalking me. I know this thing is watching me. I know this thing is, is coming for me. I just know it. Anyway, we get back to the guys, get back to the truck. I tell them the story. They're like, yeah, you didn't see a mountain lion. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I did. I saw a mountain lion. They're like, no, no, you didn't. I'm like, yo, my man, I'm telling you, I saw a mountain lion, right? So anyway, God is my witness. I saw a mountain lion. About two days later, I'm driving through this, this town with my daughter. And she goes, oh, dad, look, an elk. So I look, and lo and behold, on the side of the road, there is this animal that looks like an 18-wheeler. Like, it's the biggest daggone thing that you've ever seen. It's tremendous. Like, it's like the size of a car. And, like, these antlers are, like, absolutely, like, it is a huge, huge animal. And I said to her, that is what we were looking for in the woods? That thing? The hell are we walking around all quiet for? That thing is tremendous. You could see that thing from a mile away, from two miles away. There's no way you can miss seeing that thing. That thing is, that thing is, that thing is incredible. Like, yo, if you're going elk hunting for that, and you can't find that, it's because you, you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong damn place. Hunters that go to hunt things hunt where there are things, right? I mean, you know, it's like where we were, there was no elk. There was no elk. There was elkless. We were on mount, mountain top elkless ridge road or something because there's no elk there. I would have seen an elk. I didn't even have to walk six miles. I could see six miles that there was no goddamn elks. So first of all, I was I was highly agitated. Second off, when I got back around the redneck hillbilly guys, I'm telling them the story, and they said, "Oh well, you know, it's a sport, and it's a this, and it's that." And I said, "No, it's not. It is absolutely not a sport. You go to where there's animals and you kill them. That's it. Admit it. Tell the truth. Whatever." And I said, "Hey, listen. This is another thing I don't understand. Why is it that you dum dums?" dress in a bunch of camouflage, and then you cover it with bright orange. Well, what's the point of that? So they said, well, it's because uh, animals can't see orange. So, I, what? Well, the elk, they can't see the color orange. Okay, so why do you wear the orange? Well, we wear it for all the hunters, so all the hunters can see us. Okay, well, if elk can't see the color orange, why not just wear all orange? What's with the camouflage? Why do you got to wear camouflage? What are you hiding from that this elk who can't see orange just wear all orange? Don't wear, don't wear camouflage. That doesn't make any goddamn sense because wearing camouflage hides you from the people so you wear bright orange that the elk can't see. Just dress from head to toe in bright orange and then the people can see you and the elk can't. It seems like it makes common sense to me. I'm telling you, when I'm up there, I feel like I'm in crazy world. I feel like I'm in crazy world. Now, let me tell you this. When I go to the supermarket and I buy a steak, right? First of all, I don't equate a steak to a cow. They're just not the same thing. A steak is just some sprayed piece of red meat that I get in the supermarket. I don't know what part of a cow it comes from. 
I don't know where on a cow it comes from. I, I don't even know that it is a cow. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's all a scam. I have no idea. I don't equate the two. I don't see, when I drive by the, down the road and I see a big cow farm or cow ranch or whatever, I don't go, oh, wow, look at the cuts on that thing. Look at the chops. Look at the ribeye or look at the fat back or whatever the hell it is. I don't do that because I don't equate them to be the same thing. I just don't. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't see them. But what I do see is this, that if you look on that, that meat, on that packaging, right, it says like USDA approved. Which means that somebody at some point took this steak, they smacked it, flipped it, rubbed it down, they, they held it up to the light like they do with like a, a counterfeit dollar bill or whatever, or a hundred dollar bill. Uh, they, they, they checked it, they made sure it wasn't any mold or any lumps or bumps, made sure there wasn't anything, any diseases with it. They might have rubbed it with a swab and broke the swab off and put it in one of those things and took it to the laboratory and, and did the whole thing with it. I'm not sure what they did, but they probably have done all of that. Knowing that now I could take that and I could I could feed it to my kids without any worries. There's nothing wrong with this meat. It's perfectly good. But now you got Hillbilly Jim and he, he goes and he kills a deer um, in Pigeonfoot, Arkansas in the middle of the, the bayou and the swamps or wherever the hell they got back there. And he drags this thing home and starts hacking at it and cuts out whatever the hell he's going to cut out of it and grinds it up and puts it on a hamburger bun. Now, how do you know that that does, that 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 meat isn't diseased? How do you know that that you don't, you don't have some some uh, some elk aids or some 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 deer aids or something like that? How do you know that this thing didn't have cancer? Or it was the only reason why you were able to catch this thing was because this thing was on its last legs and it was dying. It was dying of a rare uh, sickle cell anemia. Um, AIDS, gonorrhea infested, whatever, and you just happen to be able to walk up on it and put a gun to its head and kill it. So now you go home and you hack this thing up and it could be all sorts of diseased and disgusting. What's wrong with you people? How do you know that this is not a diseased animal? You, you're, not, you're not rubbing it with a swab. You're not, you're not testing it. You're not doing any of that other stuff. So I said to the guys, no, how do you know you don't have deer AIDS? How do you know that your hamburger, or your, your, your steak, your venison isn't infected with AIDS? How do you know that? I said, because it doesn't smell. I said, yo, my man, you can smell AIDS? <laughs> like, yo, my mans. You can't smell AIDS, son. You cannot smell AIDS. I don't care how good of a hunter you are. I don't care how much orange you wear. I don't care how many 30-30s you got. I don't care if your four-wheeler has five wheels. I don't care about none of that. I don't care how high your pickup truck is. I don't care how camouflage your camouflage is. You cannot smell deer aids, my man. You cannot do it. You can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. And how I know that you're all a bunch of liars? I know you're a bunch of liars because... You all take pictures with dead animals. That's how I know. And I learned that from watching this TV show. All about in the Alaskas, or whatever it's called. Trapped in Alaska. All by myself in Alaska. Alaska, alone. Naked and alone in Alaska. Whatever those shows are. Because I watch them. And I watch them hold, hunt a caribou. And I watch them hunt elk and bears. There's a dude on this show who lives on the biggest bear-populated island in North America, and there's bears around this dude every day, and he lives there by himself. Never have I seen any of them take pictures with a dead animal. Not one time. They kill an animal, they go over to it, they pet it on its head, hey, thank you, I really appreciate it, you know, sorry I had to take your life, whatever, and then they get into hacking the daylights out of it and doing all that other stuff and, and eating it or whatever. But they don't hold it up, and then they're like, hey, look, I killed a, a, a giraffe, or hey, look at me, I killed a, a water buffalo, or hey, look at me, I killed an elephant, or a lion, or, or whatever. But yo, when you go into this town, they got heads on things, heads in restaurants, they got pictures of, of all sorts of animals, and all that other stuff, which tells me, you ain't doing it for substance. You are not doing it for substance. You're doing it so you could say to your fellas, like, look what I killed. I got, look at all these these dead things that I got. I got a picture of this one, and this one it was this size, and it had these kind of antlers, and all that other stuff. Because if you were just killing animals just to eat them, 
You wouldn't be taking pictures of them. You would not be taking pictures of these animals knowing. Knowing. That it wasn't just for show. It wasn't a sport. It wasn't a whatever. It doesn't make any... Now listen. I don't care. I don't care if you just like to kill stuff. But hunters just say that. I bought a thousand dollar rifle. I bought the hundred dollar tag. I go out on Sundays or Saturdays and wander around all, you know, with my fellas all dressed in orange and camouflage and all that other weird stuff. I do that. Why do I do that? Because I like the feeling of knowing that I am the predator and they are the prey. I like the feeling of they think that they can get away from me, but they can't. I like that, that I want to prove that I am better than they are. It's the thrill of the chase. It's the truth in all of it. And not only do I then conquer you as an animal, but then I will eat your carcass and I will feed it to my younglings. I get all of that. I'm all for that. But do it without weaponry. Drop the rifle. Drop the handgun. Drop all that other stuff. You know what I mean? You want to prove mono e mono kind of stuff. And I'm not talking about substance. If you're if you're out there in Alaska, throw a hand grenade at them. Whatever you got to do to, to get your food so you don't starve to death, do that. But if you're one of them cats who are driving by, you know, uh, five restaurants, uh, uh, three supermarkets, a Walmart, um, you know, and Bob's House of Burgers and all that other stuff so you can go up to the mountains and kill something and you're talking about I need to do it for food, no. Go up there. Now, listen, I don't expect you to go there with a, a K-bar in your teeth or a, a big, you know, knife in your teeth and you go out there and you're going to go hunt a bear. I mean, would I have respect for you if you did that? Of course. But go out there with a with a videographer. You know, have your boy film it because that, that I, I want to see. One way, whoever wins, I still want to see it. You get mauled by a bear, I, w I want the video. Uh, you maul a bear, I want the video for that too, you know? So this is what, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say... For all you hard-hitting hunters out there, right? The level of hunting you do will determine the amount of respect people should have for you, right? You go out there and you shoot somebody with a, a mod duke. So you shoot somebody with a 50 cal sniper rifle. or Not somebody, something. You kill an elk or a deer or a moose or whatever, and you're doing it with a 50 cal sniper rifle, and you're doing it from two miles away, and you're t testing wind and all that other stuff, you're not a hunter, right? You're, you're a coward, right? If, if you are getting closer in and you're like, well, I'm going to use a 30 out 30. Nope. If you're like, oh, I'm going to use a whatever rifle. Mm -mm. If you're like, I'm getting a little bit closer, I'm going to use a pistol. Nah. If you get a little bit closer, you're like, I'm going to use a crossbow. Okay. Crossbow. You pull that thing back, you let a bow go, and you miss that thing, and that animal, that bear sees you. All right, now, now we're talking. Now there's a little bit more like, I can't mess around. I can't just keep pulling the trigger until this thing's dead, right? So... Crossbow, you start getting into like, all right, well, yeah, you killed a bear with a crossbow. You killed an elk with a crossbow. Like, all right, I, I got a little bit of respect for that. I see what it is. But mind you, we're out here just killing animals. That, that's the goal, right? We ain't out here subsidizing. We ain't out here population controlling. We're just out here for the thrill of the kill, right? So now, instead of a crossbow, you just got a bow and arrow where you're like, you know, pulling, you know, like pulling them out of your little satchel or whatever, and you, 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 you go and one-on-one -on -one with these animals. I get that. Now you got to be closer and you got to be better, right? Anything less than that, I mean, I mean, you, you're doing some stuff. Like you can't trap. Trap doesn't count. You can't, I don't even know if you can trap an elk. I don't have any idea, but, but you can't, I don't even know if you can trap a bear. I heard a bear traps before, but I don't even know if that's an actual real thing. You know, I would imagine it is, but whatever. But I'm talking about, you want to get in there. You want, you want to say like, I'm, I'm hunting for sport. You want to know what a sport is? A sport is man to man made a best win. A best man win. You know what I mean? You're going to go into their home and you're going to hunt them down? Okay. Let's see what you got. Go out there and do it. Go out there and make it happen. Go hand to hand. Hand to hand combat with a bear, son. That's what I'm talking about. Hand to hand combat with an elk. Go hand to hand combat with an elk, son. Do that. Do that. Do that. See what happens. See how long that lasts. You know what I'm gonna do when I get off here? I'm gonna get on YouTube and I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna search for hand to hand hunters. Like I want to see these cats. If they listen, if there's such people on this planet that are hunting down animals, 
with their bare hands or with a knife or whatever, for all you guys that have a rifle, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear about you guys in your camouflage with orange on and all that other stuff. If somebody is out here in a goddamn um, fig leaf or a goddamn tea towel and he's out there swinging from tree to tree and jumping on top of deer. I don't want to hear about all your stuff. I don't want to hear about how great your $1,000 rifle is. I don't want to hear about your truck. I don't want to hear about your five-wheeler. I don't want to hear about none of your stuff. None of it. I don't want to hear about you, you setting... Yo, my man, you're setting out ducks so other ducks will come to those ducks. Cowardice. Woo! I don't know how, that's no good. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do not do that. That's cheating. That is cheating. Don't, don't, don't call an animal with its own goddamn call. Don't do that. Don't do that. That is, oh, when I do that, it sounds like another duck, so the duck is going to come over, and when it gets over here, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to do that with the, the turkeys. No, no, no. Don't do that. Because that's cheating. You want to you want to go, hey, dear, I'm over here. Be who you are. Let them come. Let them know you're there. Hey, bear, look at me. I'm over here in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Let's get that bear going. Let's let them know that you're there. Don't do that. Don't do that like fake. Or scraping antlers against other antlers to make them, to fool them. Don't fool them. Do not fool them. Just let them come in. Just, just, you know, get a little under each eye, a little bit of that war paint, and go out there and go mano y mano with these wild animals. And may the best animal win. You were the predator of the earth. Go out there and be a predator. Don't go out there with trickery and smoke and mirrors and magic and all that other stuff. Don't be flying drones over things to see where these animals are. Go out there. If you don't want to go to Seven, uh, you don't want to go to Walmart and buy a steak. And you want to earn that steak? Yo, my man, earn it. Earn it. Go out there. Let's go. Mano we mano. I'm elk hunting. I'm alligator hunting. I'm snake hunting. I'm squirrel hunting. Whatever. You want the thrill of the chase. You want the thrill of the kill. You want to prove that you you are mano we mano. Go and do that. You want to prove that you're hungry? You go to the store and buy a steak. Simple as that. Go to the store and buy a steak. Go to the store and buy a steak. Or take you take yourself up to Alaska and, and go out there and live live uh, live off the woods. Live like all that other stuff. Go out there and do it. Don't be dressing up in all orange. Don't be getting all camouflaged up. Don't be getting, you know, Duck Dynasty on everybody and going out there and, and, and trying to prove that you're something. Because as far as I'm concerned, and like I said, I don't know anything. I know nothing. I'm not a hunter. I'm not a, uh, I fished every so often, but I'll tell you what, every time I catch a fish, I'm like, eh, I should probably throw it back. And 90% of the time I do. Sometimes I'll cook it right there on the, on the, the bank, whatever, just because to make us feel like we're a bunch of, you know, stone cold killers or whatever. Um, but for the most part, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, even a little bit. I have no idea, but I will tell you this. I would love to see it. I would love to see it. I'm a, I'm a YouTuber right now. I'm going to check it all out. So next time I'm up there in the mountains and you see me in your camouflage and you, you got your orange hat on and, and all that other stuff, I'm, I want you to say, hey, man, come here for a second. I'm going to show you something and pull out your phone and show me the video of you choking an elk, uh, an, uh, an elk out. Show me that you you uh, you snuck up behind a deer and you put it in you know the, the full Nelson and you wrestled it down for its last breath. Show me that. You know what I mean? Then 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 you got all my respect in the world. But I could tell you this: anyone could go anywhere, sit up in a goddamn tree, and just wait. And whatever animals come, you take one millimeter of a half of a second to pull the trigger. Anybody could do that. A trained goddamn monkey can do that if you train him right. I don't know if a trained monkey can do that. But my point is, be better. Fight these things one-on-one. -on -one. And I want to see it. Thank you very much. Have a great day.